In the latest series of Four Bars Rest Mini Masterclasses sponsored by Best in Musical Instruments, we are joined by Ian Porthouse and Debbie Griffiths here at Tredegar's Band Room in South Wales. Welcome gentlemen to Four Bars Rest and you're going to, Ian, you're going to take us through some pretty basic but you know advanced as well series of exercises yep. with Dewey, yeah. uh, how to improve really rehearsal technique. So the first one you're going to do is flexibility of a player. Yeah. So I, I'll leave you in your capable hands and for the next five minutes we're going to find out how to improve a really fine young corner player. Well, uh, we'll do our best, we'll do our best. So uh, Dewey's going to use a, a <coughs> quite an old book now, this is the Charles Collins book of uh, lit flexibilities, there are lots of different type of books but all use the same uh, basic techniques. Um, so Dowie, we'll take us away with the, the first study please. <laughs> So, so that's just covering a range of just just over <coughs> one, just over one octave. Um, so the things we're look, we're looking there for is evenness of, of rhythm, evenness of tone, and evenness of uh, of dynamic. As the, if you, uh, you can probably be here that as Dowie goes lower in the range, he increases the airflow just to to keep the volume the same. And then we can use that then to develop more flexibility, even on the same study, by making the tempo quicker. So should we try that? Mm. Try that, Dowie. Good. So you can hear there that as, as the range gets lower, as the, the, the tubing increases on the instrument when we get down to valves one and three and all three, it becomes more difficult because it's it's something we don't do that much in uh, in a normal playing in the band, but it's a really important technique that we need to develop. So when that's working well, we can start to increase the range, and uh, it's the same study, same seven-stepped uh, valve combination, and this is a, a slightly higher version. <laughs> Something we you, you could uh, we could look at there is when when it gets down to the one and three combination and and all three is maybe using a little bit of a th I know these bass and cornets so the the so in tune that uh, you don't really need much but uh, so we now move on to a slightly more advanced uh, flexibility is we're starting to look at more um, speed through the flexibility to get the the embouchure um, working as as efficiently as possible so Dow if you'd like to uh, take it away. Good. Let's just so let's just stop it there. Let's go back to the start. Mm. As it got higher, it, it obviously it got better, didn't it? So, a bit more air through those through that big valve length. <laughs> So the, we can hear that the, these studies are not meant to sound beautiful. That there are just a, a, a real technical exercise to to develop those. Uh, my, my old teacher, um, sadly no longer with us, David James, used to his favourite saying was, "If your practice sounds good, it's not good practice." So when when you, David's probably thinking, "I sounds like I'm struggling there," 
that's actually good practice because he's pushing his, uh, his limits of control. If you sound brilliant in your practice all the time, it's not good practice. Many thanks for that. I think it shows exactly how difficult but how essential it is to get flexibility Absolutely. for the best players. And that's it for our first mini masterclass with the importers and Debbie Griffiths. And we'll be joining them again shortly with a second of the series.